Yo, gentlemen's game here. Today, I'm gonna keep it 100% real with you guys. Have you ever wondered why most guys are considered unattractive? Better yet, have you ever been worried about being unattractive yourself when you're outside in a social situation? Well, don't worry, cause today I'm gonna break down for you guys some of the most unattractive behaviors that guys could possibly have that absolutely repel not only women, but people in general away from you. But first, if you want to check out The Gentleman's Game Plan, my most comprehensive step-to-step -step program about seduction and dating in 2022, you can find out more below. I just updated the program with additional, never-before-seen content including interviews with some of the giants in this field, and long audio formatted content where I dive into strategies you need to use to become the most high-value, actualized version of yourself. Also, for the next 7 days only, I'm going to offer you guys a free 1-hour, one 1-on-1 one -one coaching session along with the purchase of The Gentleman's Game Plan. So hop on it now quick if you want to see a change in the results you're getting with women. Now back to the video. So I want to paint for you guys the story of Christopher. Growing up, Christopher never really cared to maintain his appearance because he was always preoccupied with other hobbies like video games, watching porn, scrolling through his phone endlessly. He was always the type of person who prioritized his selfish needs over other people, which caused him to be not very good in social settings or in team environments in school. He wasn't really an introvert. He wanted to have friends, a relationship, but because he was always unable to look past his own needs to empathize with people, he often struggled with forming real connections. Anytime he was put in a position of power, like his first job as a cash register or being on the executive board on his college video game association, he fumbled the ball because of how indecisive he was. He couldn't confidently make decisions because he was always looking for other people to lead him. He needed social approval so he didn't trust to think for himself. Other people could feel this energy and they were kind of turned off by it which only made his social life and romantic life that much worse throughout college. He desperately wanted a girlfriend, or even just to lose his virginity, but he refused to take any social risks of seeming silly since he cared so much about how others perceived him. This self-isolation lasted for years, and now all of a sudden Christopher found himself in his early 20s extremely bitter about how his life turned out. He felt like he missed out on falling in love in his youth. He was jealous of classmates he would see on social media, traveling with friends, with lovers, having adventures, while he was stuck at a job he hated, doing the same thing over and over again. See what starts in the mind, your thoughts, ultimately determine your actions, which played out brutally for Christopher. See in his mind, he was a victim, he just wasn't attractive, and there was nothing he could do about it. And so because of that, he started hating himself. He started hating the other guys around him who were doing well in the dating market. He even started hating women. His mind had to rationalize why he was struggling with dating, while everyone else seemed to have it figured out so well. So he started telling himself this story about how everything is rigged against guys like him, about how women are evil because they won't choose him as a partner. He needed to reinforce this narrative in his mind by joining these anti-woman incel groups that were essentially just echo chambers for each other, projecting baggage and insecurities, telling each other how evil modern society is for rigging the game, and how awful women are. And of course, as you'd expect, he carried this toxic mentality with him everywhere. He started to see women as nothing but mere obstacles that he tried to manipulate into sleeping with him, but almost always the girl would be able to see through his facade, catching red flags in regards to his attitudes about himself, about women, about the world. Then he'd complain and complain more, either to his family or online to his two or three internet friends. Whenever he'd come across someone who actually took the time to listen to his BS and give him some solid advice like, hey, maybe you should get off these toxic men's groups on the internet, get in shape, get your money right, and start talking to people like human beings. He'd just ignore it. And so he just wallowed in his own misery forever until he grew old and died a lonely alcoholic. 
Now, the story I painted was pretty damn grim, I know. But in a lot of ways, it perfectly encapsulates different types of toxic behavior that I'm noticing more and more of on the internet. See, the biggest thing you have to realize as a man is that you are your own sculptor and marble. You, through your own actions, through the lens that you view the world every day, your attitudes, you create your own reality. And the thing is, I empathize a lot with people like Christopher because the mind can be a scary thing. If you use it correctly, your mind can be the single most powerful tool in the universe. Just think of all the obstacles that humans were able to solve by using their mind. Inventing penicillin, harnessing the power of electricity, landing a rover on Mars. But at the same time, when the mind starts to indulge in darkness, it can quickly lead into a downward spiral. From mental illness like depression and anxiety, to even more serious things like urges of committing suicide. The point is, there are many people in the world like Christopher, who because of different factors about their life that they couldn't control, start to let their mind engage in destructive, self-sabotaging patterns. They'll tell themselves stories about how the world is against them, about how no matter how much they try to improve themselves, it'll be a waste of energy, about how they're destined to be alone forever. But the truth is, just like any other muscle or bone in your body, the mind can be healed if you're actively trying to do so. See, when we look at Christopher's story, it's clear to me that there were two distinctly troubling characteristics of his mind that led him to his unfortunate reality. The first was his indecisiveness, always being afraid to make tough decisions. And so because of that, he always needed others to lead him. He was someone who was really impressionable, easily influenced by outsiders. This is why he spent so much time on those online echo chambers telling him how much of a victim he was. If you relate at all to this, realize that at the end of the day, only you can lead yourself. No one can live your life for you, and that failure is a part of life, so you shouldn't be afraid of it if it's holding you back from making tough decisions. Life is a constant game of making decisions, learning from them, and shaping your personal beliefs and values that you stand by. All you can do is your very best, and if sometimes that's not enough, well then so be it. As long as you don't let past failures stop you from realizing your true potential. Now the second trait about Christopher that led to his downfall was his tendency to project his own baggage and insecurities onto other people. Other people could feel how bitter and hateful he was based on the energy he was giving off, which was absolutely repelling people, especially women, away. He'd be rageful and complain online constantly about his situation, but would do nothing to actually improve the situation. The last thing I'd want for you guys, my viewers, is to end up like Christopher one day. So listen up. Everyone has insecurities. But how you externalize those feelings of inadequacy means everything in terms of how other people, especially women, perceive you. Meaning that if you can accept accountability for what you think are your weaknesses, things you're insecure or have real baggage about, like being a virgin or being short or whatever it is, then you won't come off as hateful. Think of life almost like an RPG game. You have these stats that you're trying to maximize, like money, your physique, learning languages, social skills. Everyone has a different base level stats because life's not fair. And there are gonna be certain fixed stats that you simply can't change, like height for example. But instead of focusing too much on that one stat you can't change, simply focus on improving the other stats so that you can maximize your character's power level. When you come at life from this angle of personal accountability and adopting a growth mindset, women will feel that vibrancy from you. And that is very attractive. So that's it for the video guys, and to summarize, today we told the story of Christopher, the most unattractive man in the world, so that you guys know exactly which kind of mindsets and mental patterns might be causing you to come off as repulsive to women. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, and let me know down below in the comments what you guys think about Christopher. Can you relate? And if so, what did you take away from this video? 
As always, be sure to follow me on Instagram at the Gentleman's Game Official and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any future videos. Because I have one next week you're not going to want to miss. Peace.